Hello again. Welcome back. Uh, in the previous few lectures, we've been talking about what a policy is and how policies might be uh, formulated for various scenarios. Today, we're going to start uh, an extended example, thought example of thought experiment, I guess you could say, about how computer security works and how policies are formulated in the context of a real example. Right. The example we're going to look at um, is confidentiality in a military setting. This was one of the first historically important examples of computer security and even prior to computers and the example we're going to look at actually is prior to computers but it will have uh, lots of applications to the computer domain. So what's the problem? The idea is that if you have information at various sensitivity levels, as you often do, and you have individuals authorized to see different pieces of information, how do you set up that security scenario? How do you control the access of individuals to particular pieces of information that they should be allowed to see and preclude their accessing information which they shouldn't be allowed to see? This problem generally is called multi-level security or sometimes also called military security. All right, so let's, let's make a hypothetical situation here. Let's suppose that our, our uh, setting is General Eisenhower's office in 1943 Europe. Uh, the war is raging and imagine, you know, he's on a base in Europe and in that scenario there are various pieces of information floating around. There's the war plan, there's, um, what else, the defense budget, there's the base softball schedule, there's the cafeteria menu. So there's some information which needs to be protected very rigorously and there's other information about which we really don't care who sees it. Also within that scenario there are individuals, some of whom are, we trust very much and they're permitted to see very high levels of information, others, you know, not so much. So uh, General Eisenhower himself, his secretary, various colonels and privates who might come into the office and also maybe a spy thrown into the mix. Right. So our goal then is to understand what security means within that specific context and in particular to formulate a policy which will uh, allow us to gain security within that context. Right. So as we do with every one of these questions, we start by asking what is it that we're protecting and against what threats? Well, the answer in this case is we're protecting the confidentiality of information. In particular, we should only allow information to be seen by people who are trusted to see that information. Right? And I'd like to make a very important proviso right up front, and that is that we're only talking about confidentiality in this setting. We're not talking about availability or integrity. And the reason I make that proviso is that there will be some counterintuitive results which we'll come to later and I'll remind you of this proviso at that time. Okay, so remember when we talked about confidentiality, I said that anytime you're going you're to devise a confidentiality policy for a system, there are probably some questions that you want to ask and we're going to ask those questions in the context of this example. Right. The first question is, if all, is all my data equally sensitive? And if not, how do I separate it out into the various pieces? So that's the question we're going to start with. It's clear in this case that not all information is equally sensitive. We have the war plan on one hand, and we have the base softball schedule on the other. And clearly you need to protect this piece, and you don't need to worry so much about that piece. Right. So how do we do that? And in particular, once we've once we've parceled out those pieces of information, how do we, all, how do we uh, orchestrate who is entitled to see this piece but not this piece or vice versa? Right? So, back to General Eisenhower's office. There's various pieces of information floating around. Uh, I've listed a few of them here. The base softball team has a game tomorrow at 3 p.m. Not a very sensitive piece of information. On the other hand, number two is the Normandy invasion is scheduled for June 6th. That's a highly sensitive information, piece of information. And so, how do we group and categorize the data? Well, one thing that you might suggest is you take all these pieces of paper which have all this information on them and you stick them in a folder and you guard that very strenuously. You know, you hire a guard to stand there with a gun and make sure nobody looks in that. 
The problem with that is that there may be a bunch of people on the base who need to know when the softball game is, right? And so what you would also like to do is control the flow of information uh, so that that less privileged piece of information is accessible to the people who want to see it, right? Um, so the answer to the question of how we group and categorize data is we certainly want to take those pieces of information and stick them in different folders, perhaps, or files, or documents. Uh, let's just assume in this case that they're manila folders, right? So then, after we do that, what do we do with those folders? Well, we want to, we want to label them, mark them, with a label that indicates the level of sensitivity of the information which is contained in the folder. Makes sense, right? So we may want to say this is highly confidential stuff over here and this is stuff I don't really care about over here. And we're going to do that in a specific way. Uh, we're going to attach a label to the folder, maybe stamp it on the front, and the label is going to have two components. It's going to have what we call a hierarchical component, uh, which is uh, a token which is drawn from a particular set in this case, unclassified, confidential, secret, and top secret. And that's a linearly ordered set so that confidential, uh, excuse me, unclassified is less than confidential, confidential is less than secret, and secret is less than top secret. Okay? What's the, what's the intent of that? It's to tell us the, the, the sort of absolute level of secrecy that we need to apply to that particular piece of information or that folder. But we also have this additional component, which is called a set of need-to-know categories. And these may be things like crypto, nuclear, janitorial, personnel. And the idea there is the information which is contained in the folder pertains to certain groups of people or certain domains or certain areas, need-to-know categories. Um, and there's no reason why somebody who's working in nuclear should have access to information from crypto. And so the idea is we want to, even on a level like top secret, partition into various categories in this way. Right, so for example, uh, if we have two documents and one of them is labeled secret nuclear crypto, what does that mean? Well, it means that the level of information in the document is fairly high. It's not all the way to top secret, but it's, it, it's pretty, pretty confidential stuff. Uh, and the information which is contained in that document relates to the areas nuclear and crypto, right? If we have another document which is labeled top secret crypto, what that means is that the information in that document is very sensitive and it relates to the crypto domain, right? So one should be able to look at the label on a folder and infer something about the information which is contained therein. Well, who puts the labels on? We don't care. It's a security officer. Uh, maybe the base has a security officer that can look at every document and decide that. We don't really care because that's outside our concern. All we care about is that somehow that label gets on there. Okay, so then a question arises, how do you contain, uh, excuse me, how do you label a container or a document that contains uh, mixed information, right? If you have, for example, a document which contains highly sensitive information and some which is not so sensitive, well, the answer should be immediately clear. You have to label it at the highest level because the, what's the point of the label is to tell us how much we need to protect that information. If you labeled it any lower, then maybe you wouldn't protect that as strenuously as you need, and then somebody who reads that information would see the highly sensitive information for which they're not authorized, right? And if you have information from several different domains like crypto and nuclear, then what do you do there? Well, you use both categories and put them both into the set of need-to-know categories, right? Because that means if, uh, if you have information, for example, with nuclear and crypto, and somebody from the crypto group comes along and looks at that document, well, they'll see nuclear stuff, which they may not be authorized to see, and vice versa. And so you have to have both of the categories in the label, right? Just as an aside, sometimes, uh, there's a need to change the level of a document. But we're not going to worry much about, about that now. That's called downgrading or possibly upgrading a document or declassification. Okay, so what did we learn from this? Well, in our, in our problem, which is called multi-level security, we need to partition information into various categories and label those uh, documents 
or folders in a way that reflects the sensitivity of the information which is contained in them. The labels that we're going to use are structured. They have a hierarchical component and a set of need to know categories. And then finally, a folder with mixed information has to be labeled at, one might say, the high watermark, that is, with a level which is adequate to protect all of the information in it, and with a set of need to know categories which cover uh, all, of the, all of the domains of information which are contained therein. And we'll get on in our next lecture to talking about how we actually use those and decide whether access should be permitted. Thank you. <laughs>